Everybody, what's going on? Back in the shop. It's about 9.30 in the morning. And we got this, we got this Honda over here. Not doing too good. Uh, customer complaint, uh, check engine light. That's it. Um, I got in it last night to pull it in the shop and she's a rumbling and stumbling. Basically, she, she did tell me they pulled it into AutoZone. They read the codes. She gave me the paper. It says cylinder three misfire. And then she also told me that her husband um, put a radiator in it about a week ago. So that's interesting. My my ears perked right up when she told me that. You know, we're suspecting. Uh, you know, when when she tells me a car is overheating, misfire. You know. Mm. Hate to say it, but we're pretty much thinking a head gasket, pretty much burning coolant. So I pop this off, and oh yeah, it's real low on coolant. I can't even see the fluid. So we're gonna go through the whole diagnostic process again because I had so much fun doing my air conditioning video, and we're gonna make this one quick. We're gonna try to get it done by lunchtime, at least a solid, definite diagnosis. I think they want to do it. You know, you know what? Let's stop. For all we know, it's not a head gasket. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, people. Let's go through the process, see what's happening. Guys, we're going to try to do this without any fancy scan tools either. Because it's not necessarily necessary in something like this. But basically, P0303. P0303. Cylinder three, misfire detected. All right, let's write it down. Zero, zero, three. Start it off for you. Doesn't sound good at all. Doesn't feel good. We'll tack on this thing. It's ridiculous. Look, no tack. But I can tell you, they're jumping around. You know, runs good. You know, there's no reason to really put any, you know, it's getting gas, you know, we don't need to put propane in here. Um, it sounds like it's getting a good spark. So my thinking right now is, just to keep it simple, I'm gonna put a spark tester in the third cylinder just for the hell of it. I know it, I know it's not going to tell us if there's a timing issue, but there is no timing issue. The motor runs fine, you know, no issues there. But I just want to see if it has a strong spark. So basically, I'm also, I'm going to run a compression test on all the cylinders. So it's kind of what I'm preparing right now. I'm taking out the air box. You know, I, I couldn't even find the fuel pump fuse. So... For whatever reason, I figured it was easier to just disconnect the injector. So, looks like I'm taking off a bracket and I'm just pulling out the injectors one by one. too tight.
Oh oh. I have another video where I explain a little bit better what's going on, but basically we're introducing a little bit of air into the cylinder. Um, you could see, basically I'm closing off, you could, you could see it bubbling, but as I slowly turn the crank and bring the cylinder to top dead center, I'm sorry, the piston to top dead center, you could see the bubbles increase. They get greater, start bubbling a little, a little stronger. And right here, I'm basically turning the air off You'll see the bubbles stop, and then I'll, I'll turn the air on again. You'll see bubbles get introduced again, and I mean uh, basically verification right there, head gasket. Okay, we know it has a bad head gasket, cylinder number three is eating coolant. Um, how can that be? You know, we tested compression 180 across the board. You would think the motor's good, right? How can I have a bad head gasket? Well, answer to that quite simply is compression test is not that good to do on a, on a, uh, if you suspect a, a bad head gasket. One, it could be leaking through the, right into the oil jackets, and you know, it could be holding a little bit from that. It's not going right out. Um, you know, like through the block, I, I mean, um, you know, it's just, it's just not a good test. and. Right now in this video, you know, we proved that put a little, we put, you know, I just told the customer we had 180 PSI on the cylinder and we put about roughly 30 to like 40 pounds of air into the cylinder. So I, I, and I, and I showed them this exact video of, uh, the water bubbling out and I said, we're replicating your engine running on a one sixth scale. We're only putting 40 pounds of pressure. So now think of your engine running normally. It would, you know, picture picture how much pressure and how many bubbles would be coming out of it then, you know. Kind of a good way to look at it. Um, anyway, she, we probably sold the job, you know. I, she wants me to get a price. Um, I think we're just going to do it. But anyway, before we do it. If you guys can see all that, there's literally oil everywhere look it's just everywhere if I put the if I pinned the carb in here I mean it would, it would drip on my forehead so I'm pretty sure it's coming from this end cap it's like a plastic little end cap over the cam I don't know what they call it it's like a valve cover cap something like that I don't know but anyway, I'm going to try something new that I've never done. And we're going to try first for the YouTube. We're going to put some smoke. Because it's kind of hard to tell. I'm pretty sure it's coming from there. But it's kind of hard to tell because it, it's absolutely everywhere. So we're going to put a little smoke through the dipstick hole. And we're going to try to seal it off. And we're going to see if we can get some smoke coming out of there. And maybe just found ourselves a new diagnostic tool. We are smoking. Let's wait for it to fill up the system. Nope. Hold on. We gotta cap that. It's yeah. Oh, perfect. Oh, well, uh. <sighs> what are we getting out of the intake too?
coming from? <sighs> and wouldn't you believe it? Coming right out of the cap. It's incredible. It worked! Real faint, but you can see it. It's easier to see in the light from this way. Coming right out of that cap. All right, so we're gonna get this one written up. Maybe we have a next video. This will be cool. Thanks for tuning in, guys.